Here we are at the podcast table with my jug brother Gavin. My jug brother Gavin. Grab your jug. Gavin, grab your jug and give me a cheers and take a big chug while we roll the intro. Chug. When the kids are counting sheep. When the kids go to sleep. Dreams and memories. When the kids go to sleep. I sing a song, when I make up a song on the 130th episode of When the Kids Go to Sleep podcast that you can download for free on iTunes, and I come up with that song in the intro, and you as my firstborn son, the prodigy of my, gen- my, my name, did I say the prodigy of my genitals? <laughs> when I say chug boy chug, you missed the, you missed the beat, bro. Sorry. <laughs> What's up, my son? Gavin Butler in the studio today. How's it feel? Good. Get in that microphone. Don't be a shy. Don't be don't be a stranger to that microphone, boy. Get in there. You've been on the podcast before. Yeah. Do you remember? It was a long time ago. That was where was that? That was in California and we mm. talked about the book I was reading. Oh right. <laughs> Which is apropos for the discussion that we are about to commence in. Which is about what? Us writing a book. What? So once you read enough books, then you think you're Mr. Smarty Pants, you get to write a book. Is that what you're telling me? I guess so, yeah. (laughs) So I'm so excited to announce, yes, it is happening. I have these big, looming, life project, black, ominous clouds that are hanging over my life. One of them's the book, (laughs) the other's the documentary. They're big projects that I want done well and I got to get done. And we are kicking the books, pardon my language, Batuski, my friend. Yeah. We're getting her done, as they say in the book yeah, writing business. I think so. How are you feeling about it? I feel good. And, um, you know, I, are we still, what's, what's the title going to be? You want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. You decide. What if, what if I said, what if I said, I don't care what the title is. I don't care at all because the content is what's important to me. The things that we're saying, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but what is in the book matters more to me. So what if I said to you, you name the book. I don't care. You name it whatever you want. What would you name it? Pink Fluffy Unicorns. (laughs) It says top of the New York Times. We sold a hundred million pink unicorns. What do you want to call it? (laughs) What'd you say? Pink Fluffy Unicorns. Pink? Okay. Do you really want to name it that? No. Because <laughs> that would probably do really well. Like, and like, what would the cover be? If we named it Pink Fluffy Unicorns, what would the cover of the book be? Um, our faces on Pink Fluffy Unicorns. So like, we're like, uh, what are those guys that are called that are like half man, half horse? Like that? Um, what are those called? Blake? Centaurs. Centaurs? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like of Harry Potter. So like our bodies are unicorns. <laughs> No, wait, wait. Are, would we be horses? Would our, oh, we'd have regular faces, but unicorn horns. Yes. All right. <laughs> let's, let's call it that. Do you want to? No. Okay. <laughs> what should we name it? I, I don't know. Okay, so if so there's some of you that have bought the book already, which was interesting about six months ago before we really <laughs> got into the writing process because some of you would tweet me like, hey, I bought your book today. And I was like... I guess I should start writing it then. <laughs> nervous laugh, nervous <laughs> laugh. Um, so tell them, let's, get, let's, let's talk about this real quick and then we'll talk more about the book. Tell them what we just did, what we did today. We had a Skype call with our ghostwriter, um, Shh, Sally. She's a, she's a ghostwriter. <laughs> with our... Sally Collins. I like that name. That sounds like an official name to me. Sally Collins has helped other writers written over 1,000 books. I don't know how many, but... Okay, so we have a ghostwriter. What does that mean, a ghostwriter? Uh, well, we give her like ideas and notes and stuff, and she kind of puts the book together. So when I started, I have basically started writing the book maybe six <laughs> months ago, and I wrote two chapters. And that two chapters took me like three months to do because I can never... I can't write how I talk. When I'm talking, it just flows. And when I'm trying to write it... I see it in a way that I want to say it and I fret over every like sentence and word 
and it takes me forever to write. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm done with this. I want to get this book done. So we hired a very talented and capable lady named Sally Collins, who we hung out with for a week in LA. Basically, the way that we're writing this book is Gavin and I are going through a 30-day challenge. We are focusing on our health and bodies and strengthening our lives for 30 days. And we have all these things we're doing. One of them that I talked about in a vlog is that we are committing to be together every single day for 30 days. So if I have to travel, he comes with me. If he goes somewhere, it's like every day we committed to spend 30 minutes together, whether it was working out, playing basketball, talking about the book, um, setting other goals, having a Skype call with Sally, whatever. It was 30 minutes for 30 days, 30 and 30. So this week is a new challenge where we are trying to drink a gallon of water a day. And today we're on day five. And so we had like an hour and a half Skype call with Sally this morning talking about how we feel, the results, um, you know, the effects of drinking a gallon of water a day. And he's been killing it. We've gone five days and he has not missed a day with drinking a gallon of water a day. And so tell him, how does it make you feel? What do you... What are your results, body scientists? That think, what, that's what we are. We're body scientists. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Whatever, Dad. I think it kind of uh, helps me clean out my body better, and I get better sleep. <clears throat> but the weird thing was, like, in California, we kind of started that, but I, it took me, like, three days to drink one gallon, so. Yeah, because we, we talked about doing that, and we bought some gallons in California, and he couldn't do it because it was, like, warm. He's like, it's just gross. I don't like it. And he couldn't do it. So I'm like, what if we got it cold? And we started like thinking of ideas of how we can make it like not so disgusting. And by putting it in the fridge and just making it ice cold, it's easy now, right? Yeah. Plus, we've been doing a lot of like activities. We've been playing a lot of soccer. We went golfing. We're finding out if we're like out being active in the morning and you just kind of like carry this thing around with you, your body wants water usually anyways. But by having it with us, it's easier to drink and you feel a lot better. Yeah. You're looking thinner. And Gavin's lost seven pounds. Give me a bounce, bro. I told him, we got to focus on this. Do you remember? I want to see, because we had this on two Skype calls ago with Sally. Also, we hung out with Sally for a week in Los Angeles. Like, this is how we're writing the book. As me and Gal Gavin do this, I said gallon. As me and my gallon jug, my son gallon jug. I named him Gavin. Did I tell you that? That's weird. <laughs> As we're doing this challenge and going through these experiences together, we're having conversations with Sally and explaining the results and how we feel and all that stuff. So we were with her for a week in Los Angeles and we met every day. She came to the beach with us and played soccer. You can kind of see her in one of our vlogs. And we're kind of going over all these concepts. I'm talking about what I used when I lost the weight for the first time. And it's kind of like we're doing it like buddies. You know, it's like, let's try to get healthy together. Here's what I did. What do you think would be good? What do you want to try? You know what I'm saying? And for instance, Gavin's now freaking NBA hopeful. We've been playing a lot of basketball lately and he loves it. We played with the Tricks and Crew. If you watch the Samica vlogs, Gavin was hustling. You and Aaron Lafitte went toe to toe on the court, bro. Yeah. They had some pretty aggressive stuff going down on in the paint. Some flagrant fouls a couple times, but he did it at good times. Aaron was going in for a layup. Gavin was right behind him, got that <laughs> arm. I was proud of you. You're hustling, dude. You're like the, that white Russian or Australian dude on the, the Cavaliers. What's his name? Melodova? Matthew Delovadova. Okay, Encyclopedia <laughs> of National Basketball Association players. Yeah, dude, that's what it's all about. Hustle, hustle. Because, oh, I was going to ask you. So Carly showed us. I got to text Carly and ask her to text me that picture. What did you think of seeing that picture? Because I didn't ask you at the time. She showed you that picture of Logan when he was 11 years old. Oh. Pop that up on the screen. So the other day, where were we at? Do you remember? Um, Just here at the Trixon meeting, wasn't it? No, I think it was... We're at a baseball game? Oh, no. Anyways, what did you think? Carly showed Logan this picture. What did you think about that? Carly um, showed Gavin this picture of Logan. Well, I... Well, because you know how he's all ripped now. He was kind of chubby like me when he was 11, so... It was kind of interesting. So now I think I can get ripped. Yes, you can. <laughs> Here's what I was going to say. Dude, 11-year-old you versus 11-year-old Logan, you kick his butt any day of the week. I guarantee it. I knew. Gavin's calling you out, 11-year-old Logan. 
You could kick his butt on the basketball court. You could punch him better than he could punch you, I bet. No, that's what'll happen. It's like I knew so many kids that kind of, I even had it too. Like, you know, you're a little bit chubby. But when you hit puberty and you start playing sports, you grow out of it. And it's like, yeah, now show this. Put Logan's last Instagram up where he has like six pictures of him with his shirt off. But that's not what it's about, right? It's like, we're not doing this so you can look great on Instagram. Why are we doing this? Tell the people, my friend. So we can just live longer and have better relationship and stronger and healthier bodies. Why do we want stronger and healthier bodies? What's the so point of that? So we can live longer and have more experiences and hang out with our family more. <laughs> that's the book. That's why. Because... All we have is right now, right? This moment that me and my son are sitting here on the planet Earth with some microphones and headphones talking about how we want to have strong bodies so that we can have more of these moments. That's what matters, these moments that we're in right now, and we want more of those. And so we need to make wise choices about how we can have more of those and live longer and feel better during those moments. So, uh, yeah, that's the purpose of the book. That's what I was saying to Gavin because I'm like, dude, you're a monster out there on the court. Like, you're very capable. Like, he was dribbling. We didn't go easy on him. That, tell him about when, what Aaron, give him that burn that um, you gave Aaron. So, we were playing, and uh, we were, like, I was about to shoot or pass or whatever, and he's like, here, I give you space. You can shoot. I'm like, I don't need space. And I don't, and I didn't want him to go easy on me. I wanted them to go hard. He goes, don't go easy on me. And so they didn't. Like, we didn't let him double dribble. There's a couple times where he was dribbling around the side and he picked up the ball, picked up his dribble and started bouncing again. Like, hey, hey, double dribble. And how do you do that? That's, <coughs> ten, double dribble. Hey, <coughs> you, you, get out. That's what we did. <laughs> <coughs> so I was saying, like, you got it like this. Look at this. I got everybody has a little bit of this. But it's all about how, what can you do? You know, like you want to be able to run three miles. Like what if, what if you, I said, Gavin, go catch me that coyote. What if you could? That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. I'd strap a GoPro to your head. <laughs> Kid catches coyote. Anyway, so uh, we're, we're writing the book. Um, our ghostwriter is awesome. Uh, I interviewed a bunch of people because, you know, I was like, I'm not gonna be able to write this whole thing. I'm too busy with other projects. So I finally decided to hire, you know, somebody to help us put this whole thing together. But it's been an awesome process and I'm so excited and motivated because we're like halfway through. Like we've been doing this for a little over two, week, two weeks. Like we're at the halfway point now. I'm feeling better, the water's great. I was saying to Sally today, which will be in the book, I'm noticing some interesting side effects with sleep because of drinking a gallon of water a day. When I wake up in the morning, like you know how you wake up first thing in the morning, like you gotta pee and it's like early, so you pee and you're like, oh, I still got like an hour to sleep or whatever, and you like jump back into bed and it's like so nice. For the last like three, four days after I've been drinking the water, I don't feel that. Like I'll wake up and pee and I'll be like, I'm awake. Like, and even like this morning, I was kind of annoyed because I'm like, I'm just gonna go back to bed. Like, it felt so good. I got back into bed. I'm like laying there and I'm like, I'm awake. Like, I, I couldn't go back to sleep. And it was like 7.15. Usually I could sleep until like noon if I needed to. If I didn't have anything to do, I'll sleep until the sunrise. Anyway, no, sunsets. But I've noticed that because of the water, it's been cleaning out the body, I think, and I sleep better. So that's gonna be part of the book too. Anyways, um, it'll be available soon. The title, we skipped over that. We forgot to hit that. Yeah. The slated title that we have now, can you want to talk to, about that for the last part of it? Yeah. How do you feel about the title? The title, the proposed title was, is, I think people have bought it under that title because I've seen screen caps of people tweeting me, fat dad, fat kid. Is it too, is it too outrageous? I've, I've had personal friends tell me that they think we need to change it. Yeah. I mean, it is a little, but like... Does it care. make you feel bad? Is it going to scar you emotionally for the rest of your life? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it will either. I think you're such a good kid, dude. Like, I couldn't count the amount of comments on our last vlog where you were so generous to literally take the shirt off your own back to give to your little brother. Why did you do that? Well, because I wasn't that cold. So I thought, and he was like, Shivering his little body. Gets all those little goosebumps. 
so I just thought I needed it more than I did. Such a good guy. Plus, I thought it was really hot, so I wanted to. <laughs> You're like, I just wanted to get rid of that dang shirt. It was cramping my style. So the reason that that title came up is I really, I mean, it's a concept, really. I mean, it is a shocking title, right? Like, I'm in the YouTube business. I know the value of a title that gets people's attention, right? That obviously gets people's attention. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to affect you. All those comments. Did you read some of those? Were you watching that? No. Do you read the comments of the vlogs? No, not really. How come? On purpose? No, I just like to watch the video. I don't care about what people say. <laughs> I love it. I love <clears throat> it. Uh, you guys do. What is, I am curious, and I think a lot of people are curious, because watching you guys watch the videos, it's interesting to me, like, to walk in and see you guys watching Shaytar vlogs. Is it just fun to reminisce? Or what's yeah, fun about like, watching it? Like, I like to watch the Shaytar's rewind sometimes, and, uh, like... Shout out to the Shea Tard Rewinds every Saturday. Why do you like those? Because it's just like old moments, like when we were really, really young. And I like just seeing in like the one where I saw that guy naked. <laughs> oh, that one recently. Yeah. yeah. It's funny to see you talk back then. Yeah. Right? And it's funny to like compare you with like listening to Brock talk now. It's, uh, it's fun to see like just kind of like walk down memory lane, huh? And then did you see the one the other day when it was like, mom said, Daxon looks just like Emmy, and then it cuts to Emmy, and oh, it was yeah. like identical. It was crazy, huh? Anyways, um, so yeah, you're watching the vlogs. What were we talking about? Oh, the title of the book, Stay on Course, Focus. To me, that's what parenthood is about. Your kids become who you are, right? Like, there's the nature-nurture debate in psychology where people are like, well, you are who you are because that's just who you are. That's the stardust that, and I think there's some to that. Like you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna have your own personality no matter what. But I really believe that a lot of it is nurture. You really, you know, can either be messed up or helped a lot with love and guidance and learning. And I think, I think that's a very powerful thing to realize as a parent that the, I can tell you and talk blue in the face about what you should do to be a good person, but my actions speak way louder than words to use the cliche that a lot of people are familiar with. You're gonna, you're gonna see the things that I do, right? Like I can talk till I'm blue in the face about you know, being nice and loving others, but you're gonna see how I talk, right? Like you're gonna know how I really am, and that's what is gonna speak to you, right? Like, don't you agree with that? Like, and do you see that as a kid sometimes? Like I say one thing and do the other, like sometimes for instance, where I'm yelling at you to clean your room and then I go in my room and it's just as messy as yours. Do you find that hypocritical? Sometimes, yeah. Do you think about that? We're like, well, his room is messy. I shouldn't have given that away. Now, next time I'm yelling at you about your room, I'm gonna to have to have a clean room, huh? Do you think about that? Like after I leave and I shut the door, you're like stewing. <laughs> you're like stupid dad. <laughs> Well, sometimes I do think, well, I'll clean my room, but he should clean his too. If... And you're sitting there, like, having that conversation in your head. Isn't that interesting? Do you notice that you have that? Like, you have these little fights or, like, scenarios where yeah. you're like, and then I'll say this. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do you have that? Uh-huh. Like, with who? Sometimes, like, a kid at school, he says something. And I'm like, mm -hmm. kids at school. Bullies? Like, on the soccer field? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen Gavin get pretty aggressive on the soccer field at school. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of natural, I think. But are, is that good to have those in your mind? I think so. You think so? Why? Or is it bad? Um, I don't... Because you don't want to have those fights in your mind. You don't want to have that negative vibe going, right? So sometimes you catch yourself. And you're like, oh, I gotta stop thinking like that. Do you ever catch yourself like that? Yeah, like, like your sisters or something. With your sisters, where you're like, what do they frustrate <laughs> you? What, what makes you mad about your sisters? Well, just like barely when we're getting ready, and I'm like, how, I ask Avi, how's my hair look? And she like, it's like, here, let me fix it. And she tells she me. She messed it up? Well, she's like, let me fix it. I'm like, don't touch it. What do you mean? Because she like thought she needed no, to change she, it? Yeah, she's like, no, like, no, don't touch it. <laughs> and that made you mad? Did she touch it a little bit? Yeah. Because, yeah, that's annoying when you get your hair like just right. And then they're like, Ooh. Yeah, I hear you on that one. Well, you got to overcome that, right? Yeah. 
like the anger of the frustration, how do you overcome that? Where you're just like, oh, stupid Avia, don't touch my hair. Then how did you chill out after that? Just fix it. <laughs> Just like, all right, that's good, that's good. All right, well, uh, exciting to have Gavin on the podcast. Mom, that's what everybody's probably wondering, where's Colette? Tell her, tell him, where's mom? Um, is she going to California? She's or? leaving. <laughs> she has to go shoot the mom's you in Los Angeles, so she'll be back in a couple days. So it's just me and these kiddos. Yes. Can we handle it? Uh-huh. Let's handle it. Okay. We'll handle this property while mommy's gone. All right, thanks for joining this episode, 130th of When the Kids Go to Sleep. Leave us a comment. We should have went to Twitter. We almost have the Wi-Fi, guys. The internet guy was here yesterday. Once this Wi-Fi and I can hardwire into my computer. Look, I got my computer out. We're going to be reading your tweets. We're going to be doing probably some live streams, so stay tuned for that. And download it in iTunes. We got to number five on Kids and Family on iTunes charts, huh? You just, you're on, listen, this is a big honor. You're on the number five podcast on all of iTunes for Kids and Family. Huh? It's a big opportunity for yeah. you. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. all right, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, the book, check it out. It'll be available soon. When the kids are counting sheep, when the kids go to sleep, dreams and memories, when the kids go to sleep.